Now, Puerto Rico, you get it starting at 9 o'clock this morning. You're going to be getting the winds from this tropical storm. And all you're going to be getting is the 20s from what I show. I show that all the impact of this storm will stay off of you. The pink that you see is the 20s. The white up in the north is the 30s. When it brightens up, it gets in the 40s. Uh, not, it will not get, be on land with any of those winds. This is 10 meter winds. This is what damages uh, your house and everything around you. Uh, but as you can see, all, all you see is pinks getting on land. That's all you're getting is the 20s. All this white up here. There you go. It's a high of 30s. That's, that's up there in the white. You're going to be getting 20s. So I know you got this passing by this morning. I know y'all got that thinking to think about. So it looks like the, the bulk of, of the winds that come around will stay northern of Puerto Rico as it passes by. You can see it, it heads right towards Key West, and for a moment, it gets out of tropical storm strength, and it does get in the 50s. That way, you can see it does get some strengthening after leaving Puerto Rico. But as it goes towards Key West, it looks like it's going to be tropical storm strength that's going to be affecting uh, this area. There's going to be some tropical depression mixed in, but it's mostly going to be tropical storm. But just keep in mind that a little while ago, it was just 50. So if that, if that keeps on track, it could be a little bit stronger. Now, as we get into the Gulf of Mexico, it starts flaring up immediately and gets all the way into the bright orange and then yellows. And once it hits yellows, it's hitting 80s already. And this damage in wind levels is a 10 meter run. And remember, New Orleans is, I think, 15 or 20, 20 feet below sea level. Something like that. I don't remember. It's been a long time. But it shows that it heads straight for Beaumont, Texas. And if it shifts just a little bit more, it will be coming for Houston. I, I think it will move a little bit more. It might even overshoot uh, Houston and go towards uh, Lake Jackson. So be aware of this. This thing is shifting just a little bit at a time. Uh, 91, 92. I'm, I'm not showing Cat 2 uh, strength. I'm showing, I'm, showing, I'm showing 92 miles an hour. It needs to be 95. Uh, to get it up to cat 2 strength. But still, all in all, it's still damaging winds. When it comes in, all the white that you see will be in the 30s and the 40s. The orange is in the 50s. The bright orange and when it starts getting into the 60s. But I'm showing it to be at midnight as well. We're talking midnight towards Beaumont. You're going to be getting tropical storm winds. You're going to be getting storms, uh, storm surge. You're going to be getting... Rain coming down and storms in the skies is it's not going to be a pretty sight. But this is destined to move. These exact impacts that you see could be shifted just a little further west. So just keep that in mind, please. Now it looks like the storm stays for hours on end for a while with these tropical storm uh, intensities. So be aware it could be power outages. With this, uh, it could be pushing trees over that's been sogged for so much, so long time from all the rain, and that can knock down power lines. There's a lot of things that could happen with that, especially as long as it's, it was sitting. Now, it comes into Cameron at 8 p.m. on the 26th. It gets really heavy in Beaumont. It says 12, we'll say 1, right around 1 p.m. on the 26th. I'm sorry, that would be 1 a.m. the next day. 1 a.m. on the 27th, it's in the Beaumont, it's been in Cameron for a while now, and the 50s and 60s move in. That's 20s. And at 7 a.m. on the 27th, it looks like it's when it starts moving out. So that is a quite a long time of, of some heavy winds, and the intensity could change a little bit more as well. So the intensity poss possibilities from this point here, you can you definitely see it has two eyes, and I was wondering if it could be into one cell from the two that just left, but obviously it can't be because we just saw it get ripped apart by the jet stream way before this even passes. So this one's doing some rapid intensification. It is a lot of convec convective activity, but from the point that it goes from right here below New Orleans. And heads towards Beaumont. I'm wondering what, what what is it thinking a little bit above this level. If it has intensities of these 80s and possibly 90s. Within the power above it. 
is more power is more powerful than the one below it so it has all the energy it needs to feed so here at the 5000 feet level to see if it is uh, eating on the rooftops you can see that it clearly gets very strong in the center belly of this beast as well it's getting up to 102 103 miles uh, miles per hour now that's at 5000 feet that's the peak of it uh, the lowest part of the, of the uh, 850 millibars could be it could be as low as 3200 uh, feet but still that has power uh, below and the power above it is super strong so i don't see that weakening uh, at all and you can see the two eyes in it trying to form then it gets crazy strong when it gets towards the bottom of New Orleans, towards Lafayette. That gets into the 109 region. As it moves towards Port Arthur, it looks like the strongest is still yet to come. It even gets a little saw blade effect right here and right here. You can see it getting really intensified, but it is still staying at the 109. But I tell you what, being at 109, yep. Being at 109 all the way from 4 p.m. on the 26th, in the middle of, of, of the storm, the strength of it, whatever helps it pull it up and throw it to, to the top so it can breathe out, this is the strength of it. It's not a weak uh, center core of this, this thing. It, it, it's very strong all the way through it, all the way to landfall. It's very strong. Look at that. That is 5,000 feet. That is on land at Port Arthur. It is going to be 109 miles per hour, as low as 3,200 feet. It don't calm quickly, neither. It will a little bit after this flicker, too. It should. Yeah, it goes away. If the top of it is breathing good, that's because the, the jet stream came down and it sheared off the top layer off this storm. See, it, it was so stoked up up there from, from sucking the convection up and blowing it out the top that it, it's getting cloggy. It's hard to breathe. Well, that got shaved off. So now that the air is moving up, it needs to, it needs to fill that space from that rise on the bottom and it's going to get more convection. And it's going to keep coming out through the top. It's going to keep that process. And it's just going to get stronger and stronger because it has a new lung. And it just breathes it right there. Right across that part. So that intensity right there of what that could outcome be, I could not tell you. We can look and see if it's breathing right. And it, and it is. It is breathing right off the top of this stovetop. This is at 500 millibar winds. This is winds 15 to 18,000 feet up in the air. And it is strong. It is just starting at 87. And that's that's passing by New Orleans. At 18,000 feet. So it's very strong in the middle. Very strong on the bottom. And is breathing good on the top. Because it got sheared off. And it, rap, rap, it rapid intensif intensifies all the way to landfall. So if you ask me. I mean I'm the first one everybody knows. I'm the first one to beat down a story or a storm. Or any hype about what could happen but this thing does do rapid intensification all through the three levels of the storm now we'll update these as these come out uh, new orleans and texas will, will see severe weather as early as the 24th early a.m uh, texas i'm sorry i apologize florida you're gonna get beat up with storms for the next couple of days chuck i know you over there be safe man Look, it goes straight over Florida for repetitively all day, all night. You can see the time stamp on the top left. Then, New, uh, then Louisiana gets in on the storms as he starts whipping up from Tropical Depression 14 uh, coming up through the Gulf. But you will see it, it gets pulled by the jet stream and it gets sucked away a little bit. And then it gets one final motion uh, westward before it explodes out.
God bless all of you involved. Please charge your phones. Take precautions seriously according to your local officials. So God bless everybody that's, that's in these cones, in any of these impacts from, from this storm happening. I hope you'll be okay through everything. I hope that these models change once again and does downgrade because it never went intensified yet. That's the only thing that we haven't seen, and now we've seen it. So God bless you. I hope you stay very safe through all of this. Now Jude 1 through 4. Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ, but a brother of James to the called ones, who are loved in relationship with God the Father and preserved for Jesus Christ. May mercy and peace and love be increased to you, beloved ones. Though I was making every effort to write you about the salvation we hold in common, I found it necessary to write you to exhort yourself to put up a hard fight for the faith that was once for all time delivered to the holy ones. My reason is that certain men have slipped in who have long ago been appointed by the scriptures to this judgment, ungodly men, turning the undeserved kindness of God into an excuse for loose conduct and proving false to our only, our only owner and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen, guys. So God bless you. I hope you all stay safe through all this. I'll see you again tomorrow.